Coming up on CTV News, a CSU faculty member is fired and banned from campus after making threatening remarks. Plus, one campus office is asking for some help. And James Cameron changes the collision scene in the new Titanic 3D. We'll let you know what to keep your eye out for. Set the remote down. CTV starts right now. Produced for students, by students. For Channel 11, this is CTV News. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday evening. I'm Kirsten Swanson, filling in for Hannah Tran. And I'm Katie Spencer. A former employee of Colorado State University has been banned from campus and other areas. Veterinarian Paul Cudden has been fired by CSU administrators after making threats against staff, police, and himself. CSU has filed a restraining order and he is no longer allowed in CSU's vet teaching hospital on campus or around any administrator's homes. If you see this man anywhere on campus, report him to officials immediately. And according to the Poudre Fire Authority, the two campus fires that occurred during the month of March are not related. The first fire took place in a closet at Ingersoll Hall, and the second occurred in the men's bathroom in Eddy Hall. An investigation is ongoing in what started the fires, as the origins of the fires are suspicious, but fire officials feel the public is not in danger. The CSU Department of Design and Merchandising and student members of a Denver fashion group are encouraging the community to dress up for charity. The relay charity walk called A Walk in Her Shoes will take place on the CSU Oval at 9 a.m. on Sunday, April 15th. Part of the proceeds from this walk will go to Able Women's Work Closet, an organization which supplies women with business clothing and aims to boost self-confidence while entering the workplace. Prizes for the highest and funkiest high heels will be given. And the New Belgium Brewery will be making a home on the East Coast. After months of deliberation, New Belgium has finally made a decision on where to place their first brewery outside of Fort Collins. An official announcement was made earlier today and the new brewery will be located in Asheville, North Carolina. New Belgium hopes to gain greater reach by implementing the East Coast expansion. All right, well, coming we joined by Michael, who has your seven-day forecast. Plus, we're going to talk possible replacements for Tim Miles with Reno Boyd and Melanie Rose returns with Celebrity Gossip. Stay with us. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit BoostUp.org and take the first step. 43,000 CSU Ram alums call Denver home. Now it's easier for Denver Ram fans to stay connected with CSU. CSU is proud to announce the new Colorado State University Denver Center, where Ram alums will feel at home. It's a place to make professional connections, enjoy events with other alumni, and even show your Ram pride with a wide selection of CSU fan gear. Stay connected with CSU, the CSU Denver Center at 17th and Glenarm. Learn more at rams5280.colostate.edu. With all the talks of finances, construction, and fees at CSU, the campus always seems to be improving, except in one vital place. One of the only things students ask for is quiet. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. Way out on the outskirts of campus, there's a building that some students use vitally, but it just seems to be falling apart. Mandy Burke is a CSU student who needs a little extra help sometimes, provided by resources for disabled students. I use it mostly for the testing. Um, I have a reading disability, so being able to read at my, my own pace during a test and not having the pressure of reading super fast because then I won't understand it. Tony Gonzalez is a student intern at RDS and he, along with many others, think the university could be doing a lot more to help disabled students. I definitely think they could do more. Um, first off, um, I think that we're way too far from the center of campus, um, especially on bad weather condition days. It's really hard for some students to get out to our office. Um, and then as well, we definitely don't have enough space for all the testing we need to get done. Currently, RDS only has nine testing rooms, which proves to be a problem. 
And that's the frustrating part is like sometimes you'll be like put in somebody's office which is kind of awkward or just like you don't get a room by yourself here with a bunch of people. While all the construction is going on around campus, it's a wonder why a place that actually needs help isn't getting enough. I think it's just they have the priority set on improving mainstays of campus rather than a place that's only assisting a, t a minority of students. Right here is our testing area where uh, students will come and take their tests. Despite the lack of resources, RDS helps countless students every year like Mandy. Freshman year, um, I started using it. My GPA improved a ton. It was amazing just to be able to have my own time and just having this re resource here. Other resources RDS provides are note takers in class and transportation to and from campus if you are physically disabled. Higher education isn't the only area hurting from cut funding. Public schools have seen extreme budget cuts over the years. CTV reporter Kari Pills looks at one local high school facing just that. What, what do you want to make? Think back to high school. Passing period, school spirit, and all those school supply lists. But with recent budget cuts taking over, many public schools could see these lists growing. Samantha gangler Colbert is one teacher experiencing these cuts in her class. Yeah, the budget has changed dramatically in the last seven years. A lot of that due to the economy and when there are budget cuts, unfortunately, education does have to take a hit. Even things like markers and tape factor into a teacher's budget. But with increasing budget cuts, even these supplies could be trashed. To help with some of this monetary strain, in 2010, voters passed a levy and bond that allows more tax money to come into these schools while promoting student achievement. It's very, very specific in how we can spend that money. Like the ninth graders getting laptops this year. That was one of the examples of how the district spent that money. But even with this help, teachers still find themselves paying out of pocket for certain supplies. But I do put my own money into the program. In spite of this, though, Pooter High School works hard to keep money in its students' pockets. Pooter really prides itself on being a really diverse school. We have um, a fairly high reduced lunch, free and reduced lunch population, and we want to make sure that they have the exact same rights and privileges and experiences that everyone else in the district has. Kari Pills, CTV News. Samantha has taught at Pooter High School for the last seven years. Hey guys, well it's pretty quiet around Colorado lately, but other parts of the nation have experienced some nasty weather patterns, and there's still more to come. The string of tornadoes that rocked Texas on Tuesday have calmed down, but there's still a chance that parts of Fort Worth may experience more this evening. You're look, uh, 13 reported tornadoes touched down in Texas during the storm, an estimated 650 homes were destroyed, but there were no fatalities. Now that storm's moving along in the southeast, where severe thunderstorm warnings are down in uh, Florida and Georgia and the Mississippi Valley. And then Montana and the Northeast are, going to ex are experiencing blizzard conditions late tonight through Saturday morning. But now let's take a look at what's happening in Colorado. Tonight's going to drop into the low 40s, and then tomorrow will be foggy with a high of 70. Saturday is going to be sunny but breezy with temperatures in the low 60s. Then Easter Sunday should be beautiful with a high of 69, kicking off the rest of the week with temperatures in the low 70s. Well, that's all I have for weather. Tune in next week for more updates. Have a great weekend, and stick around after this break. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. Uh, 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 uh. Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Movie guru James Cameron is known for his attention to detail in films. However, he caught one wrong detail in his film Titanic. Titanic just re-released in theaters in 3D, and Cameron admitted that he did fix one error that he found in the film. 
According to astrologists, the stars in the sky the, in the original film do not accurately portray what the stars would have been the night the Titanic sank. Cameron altered the sky in the 3D version of Titanic, but insists that the rest of the movie is exactly the same. While we are on the topic of the big screen, we're going to send it to Melanie Rose for this week's Celebrity Countdown. Welcome back to Celebrity Countdown with yours truly, Melanie Rose, and my guest today, Reno Boyd. Thank you so much for coming on. You are on quite here. welcome, Miss Rose. <laughs> now, I know you talk about sports, but I wanted to get you on here and talk about some celebrity gossip. Are you ready? Um, let's do this. All right. Let's do the thing. Well, speaking of Titanic, um, have you seen the new movie yet? I haven't, and I don't plan on it, actually. Really? Why not? Just Rose. She said she wouldn't let go, and she did, and now Leonardo's <laughs> at the bottom of the ocean, and I don't enjoy that. Yeah, I don't enjoy that at all so, either. But yeah. did you know that the water they were in during that moment was actually 80 degrees? It was heated. Did you know that? I, I didn't know that. Yeah, good. So Sounds like a go. pretty Maybe good deal. Maybe you might see it now. No? Absolutely okay. not. All right. Still not going to see it. <laughs> All right. Well, I have you on the show today to talk about some Kim Kardashian news. So apparently okay. she has a new boo. I mean, not a surprise, but guess. I just want to take a guess or have you take a guess of who it is. Mm. Don't look at it. Don't look at the TV. <laughs> I'm going to guess an athlete of some sort. Actually, Kanye West. Ooh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a new couple. How long have they been together? Well, apparently they've only been together. Well, okay, this is the thing. She's reporting that they are not together, but he confessed his love for her in a new song. And then wow. she went over to his apartment and the next morning to the Walk of the Shame in the, her same clothes. So that's what, where the rumors started. Okay. How do you feel about this relationship? Well, I don't know. I mean, so if they've been together for what, a night? Yeah. So far, they've probably only got like three days left. That's so fun. that's, that's right now, I, I don't know what to think about it. And I think this is, this is typical. Yeah. Kimberly. Yeah, right Kimberly. Now. Kimberly. That's what, oh, that's what Kimberly. That yeah. <laughs> and um, apparently she's still working on her divorce, so it's like, oh. girlfriend, take a break. Get it together. Be lock, single. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Yeah. I don't know. I personally think maybe, hey, like, date someone out of the business. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's it. That's, you got to do something because it's, it's not working. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to find right. someone out there. Well, after this, you will be doing some sports with yep. Ryan. Yep. So I will let you go, but uh, thank you for coming. You got it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> How's it going, guys? I'm Reno Boyd. That's Ryan Green, and we're going to talk to you about a little bit Rams basketball now. Ryan, lately some names have been surfacing about some possible candidates. Mm -hmm. Of the names that have surfaced so far, which ones stand out to you the most? Um, I think the first one is uh, Larry Eustacey, that one right there. Yep. He's the Southern Miss coach. Uh, he's, had, he's been great everywhere he goes, um, and he went 25-9 and nine last year. The only team to beat CSU here uh, it, at Moby, I think he's going to be the one that I think he's the leading candidate. The other two, um, not as much. Weber State, a small school, and then Ernie Kent, uh, he had a year off, so I don't know if he still has uh, all the coaching abilities he, he thought or he had. So um, I think Ustasi right now is the leading candidate. Yeah, I think so too. I, th I think he definitely stands out the most. Weber State, you know, we talked about it earlier. Weber State, they're in the whack. They've only had, they went to the tournament once under Randy Ray, and that was a team that he inherited. He didn't even recruit them. So I think yeah. Larry Eustacey's definitely the best player. They've had three 21 seasons in a row, back to back yeah. to back. And they were the only Division One undefeated team. So well, I, I think I think that's what uh, the CSU basketball fans want. They yeah. want uh, Moby Arena, you know, still home court advantage. I think that's what they want. That's what's going to get them to the arena to support this team. So yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully we'll we'll find out here in the next few weeks, or hopefully by the end hopefully of this by week. Monday, yeah. yeah. All right, but now, as we know, the Rockies, opening day tomorrow. Yes. They had a great April last season. Mm -hmm. People, the expectations aren't quite as high. Some people have us finishing second to last in the conference. What do you think the Rockies, where do you think they'll be sitting at the end of this? Well, when everyone thinks they're going to do bad, they do good. So when they're flying under everyone's radar, that's when they do good. But um, this isn't the Rockies from last year. This is an entirely different team, an entirely different lineup, entirely different pitching. Um, so it's really kind of too early to see how they'll be playing ball this year. Yeah. Uh, they start off, Houston is supposed to be very good this year. San Francisco is projected to win the division. Uh, and then you just keep going. So uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting year, but I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah, well, that, there's a lot of question marks still on that uh, starting rotation, so hopefully, yep. hopefully that steps up, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Well, that's all we got for you guys, so now back to you at the desk. Thanks, guys. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for you tonight. To get news tips sent straight to your cell phone, you can follow at CTV11 on Twitter, or you can visit us at CTV11.com. Have a great night. Students are responsible for all CTV content, therefore they bear responsibility for the decisions they make. CTV is not an official program of Colorado State University, but is produced by an independent, non-profit corporation using the name CTV pursuant to a license granted by CSU.